Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install a CPU, specifically an FX6350. Now I've already installed it in my PC twice. The first time with the stock cooler, the second time with another cooler that I didn't particularly like just because it wasn't powerful enough. And so today, hopefully for the last time, I will be putting the final CPU cooler on it. And this one is made by Cooler Master. It's called the Hyper TX3. Why I'm not going with a more beefy, bulky one? Because I've already installed the motherboard and I don't want to put a backplate on because I'm lazy and I don't want to mess it up now that I have everything already in the computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with the most powerful CPU cooler that I could find that does not require a backplate. Are there more powerful ones that don't require a backplate? Probably, but this was the best one I could find and it's rated for 130 watts and this is a 125 watt. CPU. So anyways, here's the FX6350. In case you guys are going, he's an idiot, he's not grounded. Ha! I am grounded. And as you can see, I am attached to the computer case on bare metal. So there is no static discharge going on to the CPU, so I have not fried it, I don't think. Anyways, this is the only part of the computer I have to modify today. I've already put in the, the RAM back in. I made a video of that just a few moments ago. So anyways, when you put in a CPU, you will say, I shouldn't say when you put a CPU in, but when you put an AMD CPU in, I don't know if you can see that little gold triangle. I don't think it's focusing in on it. I think it's focusing on the background. But anyways, there's a little gold triangle right there. I think you can see it. And you want to line that up with the little triangle that is on the motherboard CPU area. But before you go ahead and buy a CPU and buy a motherboard and everything and are so excited to put your computer system together, please make sure that your motherboard has the right socket for the CPU you want. If you buy an Intel motherboard, not an Intel motherboard, but a motherboard for an Intel CPU and you try and put an AMD CPU in it, it's not going to work. It's just not designed for it. By the same token, make sure that you have the right socket within the company. As in, Intel has many different sockets for its different CPUs, so make sure that the sockets match. AMDs are, they vary, AM3, AM3+, FM, I think 1, FM2, so just make sure the sockets match within the company that you want. In this case, it's an AM3 Plus CPU going into an AM3 Plus socket motherboard, so we are good to go. And once you have it in, you have a lever here, but make sure that the pins are in correctly, because if you install it incorrectly and you tighten it down with this, you'll bend the pins and your CPU will be worthless, as in it's worth scrap metal. And the amount of scrap metal in this is practically zilch. So, I have it lined up, I have it firmly down, and once you lock it in, there's no going back. Well, there is going back if you want to pull it back out. But if you lock it down and the pins aren't in correctly, then there's no going back. But you can always pull it out later. And now, we have the CPU cooler. We'll go ahead and pull that out. And no, I'm not an idiot. I have not forgotten about the thermal paste. I just want to pull the CPU cooler out so you can get a look at it. I'm not taking that off yet, don't want to get dust on it just yet, or ever actually, because that's what's going to become in contact with your CPU. So make sure you pull off this part last, because you don't want to get any dirt or anything on it. One more thing, make sure you plug in your CPU fan, otherwise it's just a hunk of metal. and It won't dissipate heat terribly well. But now we go to the thermal compound. Now, if you are just using the stock cooler that comes with your FX6350, it will have thermal compound on it. Most stock CPU coolers will. I don't trust their compound. I use this. It is called Ceramic 2. And it comes from, I believe, Arctic Silver. Yeah, Arctic Silver, there you go. And I've used this twice now on this computer, one for the stock CPU cooler and once for the aftermarket one that wasn't powerful enough. And now I'm going to use it a third time. The heat problems are not due to this. The heat problems were due to the coolers not being powerful enough. 
and I have used it in another modification on my e-machine when I wanted to upgrade the CPU. But anyways, we'll add a little bit of thermal compound and you will not use this whole tube. Do not use this whole tube. You will not need the whole tube. You will not use the whole tube. It's just too much. I've used this for three other CPU cooler installations and I still have some left. So do not, I don't know if my head's getting in the way, but if it is, too bad, because I gotta see what I'm doing. And we'll just add, just spread it around a little bit. I don't know if there is a technically correct way to apply thermal compound, but I just spread it around a little bit. Not that it terribly matters because once you get this going, you're going to have to move it around a bit anyways. One thing I forgot to show you about this aftermarket cooler, it comes with a bunch of little doodads that make it compatible with multiple sockets. In this case, the one we're going to want is these little components. These little components, give me a second. I'll attach like that. So voila, you got a bracket. But first you have to run it through. So we'll go ahead and run it through like that. Well, actually, let's see which way we want it oriented first. I don't think it even matters, to be honest. No, it doesn't matter. So we'll just run it through. So I got the cooler here. Oops. Voila. It's not going to have a nice sturdy feel like you would with your one specifically designed for an AM3 cooler, but it'll, it'll work well. And then we'll figure out which way the airflow goes. I don't know if you can see that, but there are little arrows. I'll show you where the airflow is going. There we go. I think it focused for a split second. So I'll show you where the airflow goes. And I want mine to face towards the rear. So it'll have to go like that. And we'll just... Oh, wait. Oh, shoot. Did I forget to pull that? Yeah, I did. I'm an idiot. Don't forget to pull off the plastic tab. I'm a moron. I forgot. There's still a good amount of thermal compound there, but I'll add a little bit more because I'm an idiot. So yeah, I'll try installing it this way. Why? Because I want the airflow to go the right direction. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Now this just has to lock into place. Make sure it's seated properly. Oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness. I sincerely hope you don't have as much issue as I do installing something that should be quite simple to install. Okay, there we go. For once, it's latched on. And we will tighten it by pushing this down. Ah, okay. Holy moly, that actually worked. But hold on, I'll loosen it up again because I gotta slide this on over. There we go. Okay, now we tighten it. The reason why I slid over was because this is an adapter and not built into the thing. The cooler was a little far over on the CPU, but hallelujah, it's in. I was grounded, so I didn't fry it, but man, okay. So note to self, adapters are very annoying, especially if you want to get it on camera. But anyways, yeah, uh, okay, it's in, there we go. So steps, get a CPU cooler. Get a CPU, get a motherboard, install a CPU, latch it down, add thermal paste, take the little plastic thing off your CPU cooler, 
install CPU cooler, scream profusely, get angry, upset, yell at the adapter, say the adapter is a piece of junk, and then praise the darn thing for working once you've installed it, and then, oh shoot, I almost forgot. Install the CPU fan. And the CPU fan goes, ironically, oh god, yeah, we came in right there. Okay, so it'll actually say CPU fan. I don't know if you can see it, but basically it's the little prongs that accept those. And there'll be four of them, four little prongs that go in here. And it says CPU fan, so you know exactly where to install it. Don't bend the prongs, please. I'm saying that to both you and to myself. Because if I bent the prongs after all this, I'd probably scream. Probably yell. Probably throw the camera through the wall. Which is a bummer, because I do like the camera. It's a little Sony bloggy, but it gets pretty decent video. And, okay, there you go. CPU cooler installed. CPU installed. CPU fan hooked up. All that's left to do, for me anyways, to close it up, fire it up, and pray to the heavens on high that I didn't completely screw up somewhere along the line and break something. But anyways, I think it went well so far. I didn't. I made sure not to drop anything on the motherboard. Made sure not to touch things on the motherboard. Don't touch the little circuitry. Don't touch the panels. Don't touch the pins on the CPU. And I think I've covered just about everything. And yeah, just ground yourself and play with it until you get it. And that's about it. So, thanks for watching. Like I said, stock AMD cooler is much easier to install. I literally did in like 5 minutes. This one I think took like 20. And... Yeah, that's about it. It's firmly in place. It's not going anywhere. And, yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope the video was helpful. If it wasn't helpful, I hope it at least was somewhat comical and you were laughing at how much of a moron I was trying to install it. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, I don't know what to say. You're going to make me cry. Actually, I probably won't cry because I probably won't know unless you dislike the video. In which case, so whatever. That's your own prerogative. But if you did like the video, leave a like. If you want to check out other videos on my channel, go ahead and check them out. Subscribe. Do whatever you want. Free country. Free will. Woo! I'm just glad it's done. Thanks for watching. Peace out.